right. Playmaker's Corner is streaming now. Let's check it out, make sure that's going correctly. All right, I'll have to rename that later, but that's no big deal. <clears throat> Anyways, hey y'all, what's good? It's the Playmaker's Corner podcast with your solo host for tonight, Cody Stoffer. Uh, gonna try and balance a little bit like Simon did a couple weeks ago. And tonight we are breaking down some more quarterbacks here in the state of Colorado. These are class of 2023 guys. We've been talking a lot of the younger guys, you know, uh, Matarzewski, Alex Birch was last week. Uh, a couple weeks before that, you know, we had DJ Bordeaux, Beckham Kritza, and, you know, a handful of other streams talking about some of the top young talent in the state. But now let's take a look at some talent that's going to be seniors this year, potential candidates for our class of 2023 top five seniors list. Candidates, of course, this list is far from decided and we still need the entire fall season to make such a decision here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start off with Tommy Paholski here out of Evergreen High School, which shout out to Tommy. He's a longtime fan and he's even requested, you know, Matthew Geeting, which is a request episode that we did sometime last year. And, you know, in a year where we we had some doubts about Evergreen for sure. We didn't really know who Tommy was and what exactly we were going to get, kind of waiting in the wings of uh, Griffin Loritano, who was a, you know, top five quarterback for us in the class of 21. I believe he was number four, I want to say. Yeah, I think he was number four, Griffin Loritano was. And so we didn't really know what to expect from this Evergreen team this upcoming year and you know I'd say that they had a pretty solid season behind Tommy Paholski under center and so looking at his stats from his junior year that's what I have pulled up right here right now it looks like he you know threw for almost 2,000 yards with a touchdown to INT ratio of a little over four to one so really impressive here with the 21 to five here and you know eventually leading this evergreen squad to the playoffs, you know, which um, kudos to that Evergreen team for, you know, having to recover from a lot of seniors. Griffin Loritano wasn't the only guy who graduated last year. They graduated a lot and still produced an 8-3 and three record here, eventually going to the playoffs. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about some things that could have been improved here a little bit. But, you know, talking about his film is what we're going to do today, first and foremost. And that is what I'm most excited to do. And so without further ado, go ahead. An easy way to find his film is go ahead and look up Tommy Paholski on Twitter. He's at Tommy Paholski 14. So go ahead and give the guy a follow, obviously. And, you know, he's got a little link right here. I do have the rest of his huddle pulled up, so we might watch through some more here in a second. But let's go ahead and just jump into Tommy Paholski, the six foot two, 195 pound quarterback out of evergreen and yeah let's just go ahead and watch this i'm going to be grading a little bit too here but kind of talking through some of my thoughts here a little bit and you know right from the get-go six foot two 195 pounds i mean that is you know an aj jackson level level frame basically because he was around like six foot 190 six foot 190 so Tommy, from the get-go, is going to get a pretty good grade here on frame. That is an excellent next-level frame, so I'm just going to ahead and give it an 8, which is a great start. But let's see how he follows it up with his film here. So, all right, evergreen. And there's no 3 two, one so this looks like a scrimmage here. Lots of velocity on that throw. All right, now we got game time. This is what we actually like to see. Nice throw here over the side. And this kind of reminds me of watching Griffey and Loritano's film already. Nice zip. I wonder... I like the throw here, okay. But you have time in this pocket, I think. And you're looking that safety inside. Uh, I guess the pressure's getting there at that time. Yeah, no, I like it. I was just staring down here. You see at this wheel here. But who's to say that this cornerback doesn't go over here? This is a fine throw. This is one where your guy already has inside leverage here. So upon, you know, 
talking it out a little bit here as we do and just kind of discussing it. I, I'm okay with this throw. I mean, geez, he really just beats this coverage. I mean, this is a great call here on the coaching staff. And that's another thing I love about this Evergreen team is that they're not afraid to spread it out here on the 3A level and run, you know, a very next level offense. All right, here's step up in the pocket. Nice zip over the middle. A little bit of a RPO. Sheds a tackle. Cuts it back inside. Does he get there? Oh, he almost gets there. Here, I'm watching this real quick. Just seeing how many people he gets to bite on this pump. Before he comes back here. He does get this linebacker to freeze a little bit, which is good. But the, let's see where he goes with this football. Downfield, nice air under it. Ah, oh, this receiver has got to catch this and keep running. I don't know why he left his feet. I think this is a fine ball. So, yeah, that probably should have been a touchdown. But low snap, quick throw. You could have put a little bit more air under this, honestly. You know, just to not have your receiver kind of slow down here. Because notice how your receiver has to turn completely around. You want to push that a little bit further. You don't want to risk that. Because as of right now, if this defender sticks a hand up, you know, he could bat this ball down. Or if he's a little bit more athletic, that's a problem that you can run into. Especially come playoff time against some of these, you know, high, you know, ranking 3A opponents, such as you guys kind of did in that first round, this play could turn into an interception. So instead of putting it there in the end zone, put it back here so your guy can catch it, get that foot in. I mean, he has plenty of room. This thing is 10 yards. So, I mean, he's got another like six yards to catch this football. Um, obviously a little bit nitpicky here. It was a low snap. It was a quick release, but that's all I would say here. I mean, you can kind of tell that it's a hurried throw a little bit just because it does look like a little bit off the back foot, which makes sense with the low snap and makes this throw make a little bit more sense how it ended up the way that it did. Um, so that's a sweet throw. The defender even has his hands up. Not a very athletic defender, though, if he's not able to turn and look back at the ball. But just what a sweet throw. Once again, your receiver did kind of have to turn around and just go ahead and push it further down the field. I mean, look how much time you have here. This entire pocket is like, that they have it completely walled off to your left here, Tommy. And so I think that you could take a little bit more time and deliver a strike more over the shoulder. So it's kind of a ball placement thing is kind of what I'm looking at here. And wait, let me look, let me watch the form here. The leg just kind of kicks up. This pass doesn't really feel like you're driving it through. And maybe that's why it doesn't get the, the range that it needs. All right. Running loose here a little bit. Picked up some, some yards here. Lots of quick passes, quick hitters. Once again, this guy's got to just keep running. Man, it looks like four verts on like every single play. All right, RPO action here. Keep it yourself. Way to reach for the pylon here. I love this second effort because this linebacker here, watch, beats this wide receiver, tight end, whatever it is. And that's pretty tough contact. So way to reach out for it. But also, I feel like you could probably beat this guy to the edge probably. Or just cut it back inside and dive in to not take such an intense hit to your ribs. But I mean, a score is a score. So, way to show some, some muscle on there. Oh, way to step up in the pocket. Great throw here. Alright, this is my favorite throw of Tommy's uh, highlight reel so far. Because, you know, this pass pro does a great job of pushing the rush to the outside. He's looking over here. And he doesn't really like what he sees. Because, I mean, this linebacker is kind of buzzing here, so you don't want to hurt your wide receiver here. This is this route is not open at all. 
And then it looks like you might have like a post and then like an in here or something like that. Oh my gosh, that why does that look like a double in? Because it kind of is. Might have been a miscommute on the wide receivers here. But regardless, Tommy, he looks right, steps up in the pocket with a great just like way of leading with his shoulders here. Look at this. Dip up. Great footwork. And then he makes a great throw while moving forward, you know, not necessarily a throw on the run, but definitely a throw without your plant, you know, his base that he is really used to. And just delivers this strike here over the middle. Man, this guy better have scored. Yep, that's a touchdown. That's a great throw. All right. It's really choppy film here. Don't be afraid to let the play kind of play out here, Tommy. All right. Looks like we have like a comeback here. Not much to say on that. Airing it out. Ugh, always worries me that those receivers aren't catching that dang ball. Okay. Very, very similar offense to what we saw with Griffin Loritano um, in his senior year. That, now this is a great pass. So, peep the drop back. So this one, this one kind of limps out of here. Watch this pass. Watch how much wobble it has on it, right? And it kind of, it gets there, but it has a hard time getting there and cutting through the air, okay? But look at this pass here. It's still, it's still a little bit wobbly, but the placement here, oh my god. That is an elite, that is an elite throw right there. And one that you can be very happy of, happy with, I should say. All right, drop back. Good velocity there. Once again, don't be afraid to push it a little bit further. RPO here. First down. Drop back. Boom. Okay. Quick hitters here. Let's see, Let's see if we read the blitz here. So look at these receivers getting jammed super hard. Let's her rip. All right, so this throw. See, this is where making these pre-snap reads and being able to recognize the defense pre-play is, is good here. Because, all right, both your receivers get jammed up here, sure. This safety playing... High, high cover. I mean, holy cow, how far away is he? He's miles away, okay? But look at this. They're bringing both of these inside linebackers here. So you got to know that this drag here should be open. God, you, these guys need to do a better job of getting off. But, I, I mean, it looks, it looks like first down. So it looks like you have a couple of downs to get this first. Granted, that ball placement is, is pretty good. But, you know, with the clip cutting out, I don't know if the receiver is going to be able to hang on to the ball through this amount of contact. I mean, holy cow, you're kind of leaving them out to dry. And so I don't know if maybe you could throw in like a pump here to that left to kind of freeze this guy a little bit and then hit this real quick, like a really quick pump. Because that pump that you had earlier was a huge shoulder throw. You don't always need that for a pump. You could just give it one of these and like a hard look and then come back to the right side of the field here. Because honestly... I feel like if you hit this drag route in motion, he has plenty of room to turn it up or just get a quick completion. I mean, this play with a double linebacker blitz here, this should be open over the middle. And these receivers, they got to do, no offense, but they got to do a better job at getting off the press. I mean, this is ridiculous. Look at this. Where are you guys doing? Where, where are you guys going? You're going wherever they want you to go. But uh, anyways, um, good ball placement here, but maybe not my first choice of where to go with the ball. All right, that's a pretty tight throw here. Is this like an intentional pick play here? Hmm. Got a little bit side army here, uh, probably because of the pass rush, which I kind of get, but just something to take a look at. That's sweet. Gosh, don't be afraid to let this play load in a little bit. So, great recognition here. Hold up on the next one. I mean, 
look, they're bringing one, two, three, four, five, six, at least. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe even seven. But you know that your receiver already has inside leverage here. Also, this defender looks like he's kind of holding the jersey a little bit. But anyways, you got here. This is clearly a problem, right? It looks like this defender can make the play on the run. So I love that you keep it here. You know, a little bit of a chop block here, but maybe they could still make this. But you keep it here. Obviously, you're not going to be able to run it. But lots of velocity on this throw. Look at that. That just, it already happened. I feel like the, the teacher from Mr. Gr right there, right there. That's where he threw it. Oh, come on. Like, look how fast that happens. Wicked quick release. Wicked quick release on a lot of these throws, honestly. And I really like that. That's, uh, you know, an adaptation that you've had to make. And it's a good one. Look at that. Okay, so a little bit of back shoulder down the middle here. Nice. I like that. Nice pocket here. Let's see. Is he just doing it? Okay, he's just doing a spot route. He's not doing a crossing route, so I guess that's fine. Yep. Nice. Let's see. What read is this for you? Okay. Way to really sell that play fake. I mean, look at this. Not that. Sold that so hard. Look at that. The entire defense just swallowed in here. Easy score. Easy score. All right. Let's see what, what other games we have here on his huddle. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look through his kind of game-by-game -game stats a little bit here. And then kind of go from there. Because we've seen him succeed, right? But where are some games that he maybe struggled a little bit? I mean, look. Lewis Palmer had a heck of a game. Five touchdowns, no picks. Battle Mountain, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Okay, so, but I mean, still big wins here. And then you end up at this Lutheran game. That came up at a tough time, so I won't read too much into that. And this game, you know, it was a lost Green Mountain. I mean, gosh, they threw the ball 45 times for 158 yards. That's a little concerning. And then this Durango game is what I would say are the biggest flags here that don't bode well. Let's see, Conifer, Littleton, Lewis Palmer. How do we do in the Conifer game? Hmm? 20 of 29, 69%, 181 yards. Okay. Now yeah, let's check, let's take a look at that game, shall we? While I kind of get some of these grades going. Doing some grades here, seeing some some familiar kind of uh, plays here and whatnot. So I, I guess those those full season highlights, I'll just kind of replay those um, as much as I can here um, while I go through his grades and kind of talk about that. So let's see, arm accuracy. And I guess I'll kind of talk about my process as I'm going through it here. But I love his arm accuracy. I think that he can make a lot of these deep throws here as evidenced by how much they like to push the ball downfield. And I think that he has a strong arm. I am just a little concerned about the wobble on it just a little bit, which may be a technique thing. And then sometimes how he does underthrow his receivers. But I feel like that's more of a timing thing, and that's where I'm going to reflect that a little bit too. Um... Talking about his accuracy, I'd say that he's pretty accurate. I mean, I think this throw is probably an all right example here. Yeah, I mean, he's able to give his receivers a chance to make plays on the ball. It's not necessarily the best every time, but, uh, I mean, throws like that, that's just incredible accuracy. So, you know, I think it's at least good. It's at least good here. Let's see. This is where he struggles a little bit here is the timing on these throws because I think that's what's maybe putting some of these throws a little bit off here. Let's see, overall mechanics and fluidity. I mean, look at this release, right? Oh, look at that pocket movement. I mean, that pocket movement's sweet. That's baller. 
All right, nice little pass here. On his windup, he can get a little bit low on his deeper passes. So I am going to ding him a little bit there for that. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, gosh, decision-making skills is tough because he didn't throw a lot of interceptions this year. He threw a lot more touchdowns. But, I mean, a lot of these plays just, I mean, it looks kind of like the same play over and over and over again. So if you have more variety of routes, don't be afraid to kind of expand your highlight reel a little bit. But for the RPO stuff, that is pretty dang solid, and I will give you some props there. Let's see. Let's see, we see a couple of instances of pocket movement, but it's not necessarily throughout the whole video. But I think that he does show excellent, excellent pocket awareness. So I will reward that quite a bit. Then, let's see. He's not really asked to do this too much, and I won't really consider stepping up in the pocket all that much as throw on the run. So that's probably going to be his lowest grade here, just because I don't see a whole lot of it. And I need to see consistency, and I need to see it done quite a bit here. From what I can tell, he's a pretty good scrambler. And let's take a look at his overall stats on the year. 91 yards, it looks like they count kind of that negative, you know, like sacks as negative yard runs. And four touchdowns, so I'd say he's a decent scrambler. We'll put him right in the middle of the road here. All right, I think that means that I have my Tommy Polos Poholski uh sheet done here and so let's go ahead and bring this up and here let's insert one more row here so that there's a little bit of a gap but anyways so tommy here i think he has excellent arm power i think it's his second best strength here and i i think it's obvious i mean this entire evergreen offense is all about pushing the ball downfield pushing the ball downfield pushing the ball downfield i mean they run four verts a lot, a lot, and so I don't think that you're able to do that with unless you have a quarterback that can push it down the field. I do have it at an 8.8 .8 because, <clears throat> like I said, he does underthrow sometimes. Not to mention, I mean, I'd love for a throw like this. This is a great example, actually. We're at the 50-yard line, just inside the 50-yard line. Okay, he's getting the spot like the 45. Solid drop back, a little bit of happy feet on the the mechanics here a little bit so i'm gonna bring that down just a hair um and this is just this is what the process looks like behind the scenes you know when you are usually watching film with simon and i we're usually watching the film and then doing our grades while the film's playing or while the other person's talking and stuff like that but this is the live kind of like step by step what is my brain looking at how am i processing it and so then you see a throw like this and I mean, granted, he was rushed. God, he kind of got rocked low key. It's like, you know, if you could push this to the 10, and I mean, look how much air he's putting on a lot of these passes. Like, a lot of these deep throws have a little too much air, I almost want to say. And I feel like that's a something that can kind of happen if you feel that you don't have necessarily the zip to a pass. So that's why I give it an 8.8 .8 here instead of like a 9 or anything higher than a 9. It's just a couple of different, you know, things that did just show like inconsistencies, whether, you know, it's the placement of the ball or how high the ball has to go. And while, you know, moon balls can be a sign of strength, they can also kind of be a sign of the opposite. All right. So moving down, uh, arm accuracy. I think he's a pretty accurate quarterback. And just as a reminder, you know, these are kind of the grades here. So one to three needs improvement. Four to seven is about average. Seven to eight, above average to good. Uh, eight to nine, good to great. And nine to ten, very good to elite. This is kind of two-star, three-star here in this ballpark. This is three-star, four-star. This is four-star, five-star is kind of how that bubble works here. And so hopping back over to Tommy, I do think that, uh, you know, his arm accuracy, it's good. It's, it's good enough, and I think that he's able to make some good throws. But I just haven't seen him make a whole lot of, wow, like, super... I mean, this is probably his most accurate throw right here that just happened. And, yeah, that that's just kind of the way it is, where I don't see, like, you know, him hitting these 
medium routes, kind of like Griffin Laurie Tano was, you know, in front of the safety behind the linebacker, kind of touch super sweet passes like that. I mean, he has that one where he steps up in the pocket earlier in the video. But, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, that's pretty accurate and good timing. But uh, speaking of timing, I think that it needs a little bit of work. I think that timing is the biggest issue with his receivers kind of having to turn around to catch some of these deep passes. And I think that maybe another year of experience or just more years with these wide receivers might work. I mean, let's see, what year were these wide receivers? Let's take a look and find out together here in player stats. In player stats, I said. All right, receiving, sort by yards. Okay, so senior, senior. But it does look like you do get three juniors coming back that did catch passes from you last year. I think Zimmer was the leading rusher, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so you get a lot of juniors coming back for this team, which is always a good thing. And, you know, hopefully the timing kind of progresses with some of these receivers who are coming back, who did catch, you know, quite a few passes this past year. Versus, you know, some of these guys, they were catching passes from Loritano, and it might be a little bit different switching from one quarterback to the next. Anyways, back to the goods. Um, overall mechanics and fluidity, I actually am going to bump this up a little bit while his film is kind of playing here. I think that he's very smooth passer, and his release is just so dang quick. I'm actually going to bump that all the way up to an 8, maybe even an 8.1. I mean, there are some little things that I can nitpick. You know, I think that his arm goes a little bit low on some of his deep passes. But overall, I mean, his release is super fast. It's pretty concise. His footwork isn't the worst. He has a little bit of choppy slash happy feet, which, ah, uh, right, that is kind of what dropped him down earlier when I was talking about it. So I'm going to go 7.9 here because I think it's very good, but I still think that there's plenty of room for improvement. And uh, Just working on this drop back is one thing. I don't really like how close together, like the feet doing like a clap kind of thing. You don't really want that on your drop back. You want your drop back to be balanced and kind of, you know, like spaced out adequately, I should say. Which, you know, he kind of does like right here. This is excellent footwork technique and mechanics, which is what's going to get him. Final answer, eight. Final answer, eight. Uh, Decision-making skills. You know, like I said, he threw a lot of touchdowns, very little interceptions. Most of the time when he's throwing the ball to somebody, I mean, they're open, okay? Uh, but it's some of these huge incompletion games that I kind of have a problem with here. I mean, for instance, I mean, you have a 55% here against a not-so-good Sterling team. You have a 54% here. This 40% uh, circumstances obviously probably had a lot to dictate with that. But, uh, I mean, from a stat sheet perspective, this is kind of what scouts are going to be looking like. And they might ask you what happened in this game, and, you know, I think that there's a fairly good reason for, you know, why this game may have been a struggle, obviously. But uh, then I think that you got to clean it up here by Lewis Palmer. I mean, yeah, you throw five touchdowns, but why are these 10 incompletions happening? I mean, I, some some quarterbacks would literally have like four or five incompletions. And so I think that's kind of a performance that you're looking for from Lewis Palmer or even, you know, Littleton. I think that that's a game where you probably shouldn't miss more than like two passes. Uh, no offense to... Uh, Coach Wes over there holding it down. But, uh, you know, that, that's kind of where my decision making is. Plus, a lot of the concepts, really simple concepts, lots of four verts concepts, a lot of get them downfield, lots of those shallow crossing routes and hitch routes. Um, I just don't see a whole lot of complicated routes that he has to throw. Like, you know, Griffin had to throw some deep corner routes. And maybe he did throw those, but I just don't see that through looking at, you know, this small little video so feel free to kind of expand the clips a little bit so we can have more time to look at the defense and how they're setting up and if a receiver drops it honestly it's not the worst to leave it in there obviously put all of your touchdowns and completions first but if you put those receiver drops later it's like hey my completion percentage is probably better than what it looks like here and so that's just some advice for people who are looking at like the max preps kind of loadout here and you know for quarterbacks where it's like hey you know, I mean, a lot of these incompletions, they could have been drops, but I can't necessarily tell um, is kind of where I'm at there. But lots of simple concepts kind of lands you here. It is a spread out offense, which I do respect a lot more. But, uh, you know, I think it's good for what the system needs. But I want to see a little bit more kind of going through multiple reads more consistently and, you know, kind of this playbook opening up. Because, I mean, basically, if I was trying to coach against Evergreen, I call cover four.
and just have like just see if they can beat my defenders off the line or just jam the wide receivers. I mean that seemed to work pretty all right. And um, see see if they if see if we can make Tommy play more patient, kind of like death by paper cuts football that we see a lot of these other quarterbacks kind of able to you know take what the defense gives you. And so I'd kind of challenge Tommy to that and see if he's willing to kind of accept that. And so some of those games may help influence what this score looks like next year. Like I said, for scramble ability, he's right in the middle. Um, you know, he doesn't show me any big jukes or any quick cuts or anything like that, but he does show me the ability to run an RPO, to run a read option, to get up field, pick up yards. He's decently fast, and, you know, he scores a couple of touchdowns, which obviously opens up the playbook a lot for Evergreen in the red zone when you can run these RPOs because Tommy is just athletic enough to score here. I think that he might even be a little bit more mobile than Griffin was. I'd have to double check the film to be for sure on that. But, uh, you know, this is a pocket passing, or at least it was a huge pocket passing team with Griffin behind the wheel. And to see them running a lot of these read options and letting Tommy kind of run with the ball, super promising. And I think that, you know, with a huge rushing performance touchdown kind of season that you may see this scramble ability jump up throw on the run as i said when i was kind of filling it out it's something that evergreen is just not asking him to do to to do a lot you don't see a lot of rollouts you don't see a lot of boots a lot of it's in the pocket in the pocket passing and you know he does step up and he does deliver that strike but this is a really unproven category to me this is perhaps his most unproven category to me and that's what lands him in this 4.6 now 4.6 is like I think that's like average, like he's starter caliber, you know, at this level to throw on the run for what's asked of him, but there's just not enough here for me to really justify a higher grade like a Keegan Patterson, like an AJ Jackson, like even a Clayton Jacobs, you know, these guys that are rolling out and making throws Briggs Wheatley, who's constantly rolling out and making these flood throws and stuff like that. Those flood concepts are going to be huge for, I mean, moving the chains first off and is something to potentially look into. So just working on maybe the footwork too a little bit, maybe that footwork, how it gets super choppy and super close to each other is something that kind of, you know, scares OCs or offensive coaches from calling some more of these kind of rollout kind of plays. So working on that footwork is probably your biggest job this off season if, if I had to give you one to focus on. Granted, your pocket awareness, magnificent. Absolutely amazing. You know exactly where the pressure is coming from. You don't even have to look the pressure right in the face. But when you do, you also make good calls with the RPO and with running the read option and stuff like that. And you just do a good job of sensing the pressure and making sure to get rid of the ball. So I'd say that the pocket awareness is really good. Pocket movement, he had that phenomenal. I mean, that was like a five-star pocket movement play. I'm not even going to lie. But then you have some plays where you kind of, you know, throw off that back foot. And you don't really move the pocket side to side. I mean... That one play where you had that entire wall to your left there and you're standing over on this side, step up more in that throw so you can get it more over the top to your receiver. It was a great throw, very accurate, just over the defender's hands, but just don't make it so close. Um, and don't be afraid to, I mean, when you, with you underthrowing a lot of these deep throws, and this kind of tags in with timing a little bit, it's worse to underthrow than to overthrow a deep throw. You overthrow it, it's going to end up hopefully out of bounds or just somewhere where no one can catch it. You underthrow it, and then you get these athletic cornerbacks, and they do exist on the 3A level, who will make a play on the ball and will cause some of those interceptions. I mean, you look at some of these games where you struggle. Lutheran has a lot of phenomenal athletes. Durango, I mean, they have a four-star guard right now, and you know they had a quarterback who went and walked on uh, as a PWO for you know, CU, and they have a couple of other great athletes over there at Durango. And so that's how you end up in situations like like this. And I hate to, to point it out and call it out. But I'm just kind of telling you how it is. But overall, that puts Tommy here at a 71.7 as of now. I think that there's still lots of things to like here. You know, honestly, I even wouldn't mind bump that up 0.1 point here. There's a lot of things to like. But I think that there's a lot of room for improvement. And I think that it will reflect on how much work he does in the film room, honestly, and how much more, you know, this evergreen offense can kind of open up some more complicated passing concepts. I mean, it's a great 
start that they're running this spread, you know, three receivers, four receivers, running back, all that good stuff, running this RPO stuff, and all of that is fantastic. And I don't know if it's maybe the line that needs some work, but if they can open up the playbook with more routes and I can see, you know, more of these posts where we're splitting safeties and I can see these corner routes that are like all timing, from the slot position or more comeback routes because you had that one hitch but you had time to kind of step into it and he had time to adjust to it versus like a comeback out right by the sideline where you have to be precise and you have to be on the same page and clicking with your wide receiver stuff like that is kind of what i'm going to be looking for from tommy paholsky's film here and you know now that i think about it let me open up the stream so that I make sure that I'm not ignoring any um, any comments or anything like that that may be in the messages. But that's kind of where I'm at with uh, Tommy Paholsky here. And, you know, I still think that this is a pretty high grade, honestly, and not necessarily something to be upset about. You know, I mean, a 71.8, that's comparable to... Let's see, that's pretty close to my grade for... Seth Frazier. It's actually a slightly higher grade than Seth Frazier, and he was one of the best senior quarterbacks, which, by the way, go ahead and check out that episode, Best of the Rest Quarterbacks, that Coach V did, and, you know, for more quarterback breakdowns and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I think this is a solid grade, and I think that, you know, it's definitely enough to have us keep an eye out and make it out to a game if we can. Um, just because, I mean, Evergreen, they have a great system for quarterbacks, and Tommy is currently thriving in it. And, you know... The touchdown to interception ratio, that's what got Griffin Loritano on our top five list. And so if you can be a really smart quarterback and you can make all the throws and you can open up kind of the, the reads and stuff, uh, I'd love to come out and see a game of yours sometime or Mason or whoever and kind of go from there with with watching your film. But that's Tommy Polsky. If I was saying your name wrong, by the way, my bad. Um, but you're in our DM, so just let us know. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. But uh, Tommy Paholsky with a 71.8. Guys who are watching the stream, guys, gals, whoever's watching the stream, go ahead and comment kind of your reaction to that grade and let us know in the chat right here, where I'm going to type right here, um, let us know. I'm going to now type in talking syndrome. Let us know what you would grade Tommy as or what grade you would give there we go grade you would give tommy exclamation point and so uh 71.4 like i said very good he has i mean four star talent in the you know arm power and pocket awareness categories i think it's like three star four star kind of borderline but it's the the other things where he has to step up his game and you know move into that more actual three-star kind of ranking categories here because as of right now he's barely a two-star recruit uh i'd give it to him but uh plenty of room for gro growth plenty of room for growth but uh tommy here he's unranked as is the very next quarterback that we are going to be talking about here and that is isaac cisneros out of kennedy high school shout out to their oc uh victor orta um, you know, he does a great job of keeping us informed and helping us kind of keep an eye on, you know, some of this Denver talent that does go overlooked. It really does. And, uh, Isaac is definitely a victim of that because he was a beast this past year. I mean, just taking a look at his stats and he was somebody who is an offensive playmaker of the year candidate for our end of the year 3A awards. And there's a reason for that. I mean, dude threw 33 touchdowns this year and ran for six. So almost 40 touchdowns on just the offensive side of the ball, not to mention, you know, doing so with pretty solid efficiency, not throwing a lot of interceptions. And, you know, this, this Kennedy team averaged a lot of points per game. I mean, you got 30, 47, 20, 35, 15. I think that this is like the lowest they score all season is 15 points. Then 24, 48, 18, 28, and then 49 here against Lincoln. And I mean, look, he had 10 touchdowns to start the season. There's no wonder that he was on our radar as one of the best playmakers of the year for the 3A and even 1 through 5A class, honestly, when you start off with 10 to 1. 
And, you know, at a one and one record, we were like, okay, we're getting Isaac maybe will this team to the playoffs. And while he wasn't quite able to do that, I mean, there's a lot to be hopeful for for this Kennedy team. And Isaac Cisneros, along with uh, Ron, uh, Ronnie Gallegos, I want to say is how you say it, or Gallegos. Oh, no. Now I'm going to get made fun of. But anyways, um, guys like that have me very hopeful for this Kennedy team and let me know that they have a lot of talent. And, you know, there is even like uh, Vista Ridge versus Kennedy. I want to say seven on seven or something like that, where, you know, Isaac and Ronnie were going back and forth with Braden and BB. You know what I mean? Like they are very high caliber players. And Isaac here, he's overlooked for sure, because I mean, check it out. Five foot ten, 160 on here. He's listed at five, not or five, 1160 uh, for some reason here. It's five, nine, 180. I mean, he's a shorter quarterback for sure, and he has to rely on his athleticism to make some plays here. But he's somebody who I think can make a lot of the throws and somebody whose film I'm looking forward to watching here. We have a little bit more film here on Isaac, so we probably won't have to dive through other games. But let's go ahead and watch Isaac's film here. All right, so here he goes on the run. Huge windup, big throw over the middle. Past the entire defense. I mean, look, this pocket... Yeah, I know that we're already starting over here, but it's a rollout. Okay, this is a hard throw because I think that Ronnie here is running this backside either post or chair route would be my guess. And so you have immediately the pass rush is kind of already won on the first level here. So how does the running back pick it up? He picks it up just enough and Isaac's able to kind of bring his step up here. He knows that he has this worst case scenario. But he has his eyes on the prize down here. I'm back on my second monitor because that's where the throw is. And this is a hard throw on the run under pressure here because this guy's going to start getting pretty close. And he kind of clutches it here, which I don't love. You know, like a little bit of a, a double swing here. But I mean, look at this throw, man. On the money, hits the receiver in stride. That's what you're looking for. <sighs> we need to have music playing during these streams. I forgot how to do that. But anyways, all right, so we got to drop back here. Feels so initially, initially here. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me control this with this. Come on. Damn, what is going on here? Okay, perfect. So we're back to this. So this guy, he gets off the edge pretty quick and it looks like, it looks like he feels it. You know what I mean? Like he steps up here, watch him dip his shoulders and tuck the ball away and protect it. That's big time sensing that pressure and not getting strip sacked because I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this play ends in a touchdown and it could have been a strip sack. So when you see that kind of like big gap that's filled from worst case to best case scenario, that goes a long way. Rolls out left. Comes back to his right. A little bit of uh, Russell Wilson here. Happy Broncos Day. And this is, I mean, no other throws really open. And it doesn't really look like he can get upfield at this angle. Because you got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Right? This is a tough throw here on the run after running around for a second. And he plants his feet. I love this. I, I know Victor is telling him, hey, Isaac, plant your feet and deliver this strike. Because that's something that we talked about last year on his film breakdown is that, you know, he didn't always plant his feet. And you could tell that he was more an athlete who could kind of like run the ball and then occasionally throw the ball versus this year. He was a lot more of a quarterback. And uh, I think you could say that he probably listened to our breakdown last year and took that to heart. Now, obviously, given the circumstances, that's as good as a of a throw as you can hope for. It's a risky throw, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. This guy stumbles in at least to the red zone. So, all right. This might be against Inglewood or Alameda. So, nice step back here, first off. Because, I mean, he could roll out left here. So, I think that he could manipulate the pocket a little bit better, but that's kind of nitpicky. Throws in a juke here, picks up the first down. Can't be upset with picking up the first down. Step back, steps up in the pocket, tucks it. I love the quick decisions here. Oh, hey, who's this corner getting dogged? 
Wow! Oh my god, dude, you just got struck by a linebacker. I'm sure you heard it from your coach. But anyways, nice play there. Isaac coming in with velocity. All right. Oh my gosh. Look at this pressure. They're bringing... Is that five, it looks like? This is a four-man rush. You've got to be kidding me. No, it's a five-man rush. Just straight up on the line, though. Somehow escapes out of here. Like I said, some Russell Wilson stuff. And an absolute dime here to the back of the end zone. I mean, he sees, he's standing there. Wait, look at, look at this wide receiver. He's just like, hey, look at me. I'm open. Boom. Oh, thanks, Isaac. Touchdown. Great play here. Just great pocket manipulation. Nice ball. I still don't like that he's clutching it. Look at this. He like grabs it a second time and then throws it. So I don't know if that's a bad habit, if it's hand sized or something, but that is something that will kind of come up for uh, overall mechanics. But I mean, I, if it ends in a throw this good, I mean, good God, that's as good as it gets. I love it. Stuff throw. Okay, makes this defender miss. Throws on the run. See, it looks like a couple of his receivers had the defense beat, but he throws this one over the middle, which is a harder throw. Yeah, he's got him beat. He's got him beat. I could nitpick a little bit, but let's just keep watching the film here. Oh, nice move. Super shifty. He's still the athlete that we talked about last year. That's the important thing. It's a lot of quarterbacks still kind of overcorrect too much to like, now I have to play in the pocket. But no, I think that Isaac just does a great job of keeping his eyes downfield now. And we love, he does this move so much to these. Oh, okay. This is where part of the arm power concerns start to kind of come in here. Look at the, how he throws this ball. That, that looks ugly. Okay, and he put, it looked like he put everything he had into this ball. Let's see how far this thing travels. So he throws it from basically the 30 to the 30. So like a 40-yard throw, and it gets completed like this. I mean, that that's where the throw had to be, but I don't love the arm motion that it took to get there. That's what I will say about that. But way to keep the play alive. Fade route here. Wow. I don't love this play call or decision when it looks like backside you have this I mean, this needs to go into the end zone, first off, wide receiver. You got to sell that you're heading to, like, here, but then stop here. But, I mean, he's got to make this throw. It's understandable. And he made the hell out of it. So, great throw. All right. Let's see, what is this looking right? Is he, is he reading this? No, he doesn't look long enough here. Kind of looks like he's staring a receiver down a little bit. But awesome throw. Woo! That's good stuff. All right, this is still against Riverdale. Not the show. Ugh, you got to freaking catch that. But this throw takes a lot of kind of effort to get out there. And I mean, this is from the other side of the field, but this is at like the 45 to the 30. So this is a 25 yard throw. That receiver's gotta make that catch, but. Okay, got a speed option, straight up the middle, way to read and take what the defense gives you. Ed, way to keep going and keep going. All the way inside the five yard line, sweet deal. 
Isaac so far looks like he's going to be scoring pretty good. But anyways, back to this. Boom. Nice throw. Way to split the safety in the corner. I'm going to let the video keep playing here. Um, but uh, that is when I won't remind... Uh, probably bumping up point one of a point. Way to step up in the pocket there. Good move. That's the, these are the kind of throws that I'm talking about that I want to see here. Um, but let's let's watch his eyes here. Kind of looks like he's staring this down a little bit. That's a couple of times that I've caught that. Looks like he kind of moves his eyes here on this one. All right, back to this. Lots of rollout. Way to step up into the throw and get it there. That's sweet. That's arm power that I'm talking about on these medium throws with the velocity to get it there. So maybe struggling just a little bit on some of these way deep throws. But I mean, the velocity on that medium throw... This is, when we're, when we're talking about medium throws and getting it to the receiver in a place where they can make a play on the ball, this is kind of what we're talking about here. You know, this like 20-yard throw that is an automatic first down, basically. Granted, he did drop back a little bit, but, and then just puts it in, in a place where his receiver can make a play on the ball. Ugh, what is going on with this follow-through? His entire body. I mean, it looks like he's protecting himself from a hit, but it's kind of weird when you throw like this and then end up like with your arms crossed over here. So, still drastically improved from last year, but very interesting, I will say. Nice zip there. Okay. Arm power showing me some mixed signals a little bit. Let's see. Does he go through reads here as he's staring this guy down? Kind of looks like he ends up staring this guy down. And if he's doing this on pre-snap reads, that's okay, but it just seems like it's happening quite a bit here. Um, but, I mean, it's only his second year really playing football. So it'll probably get more and more complex as it goes. Easy, easy money. I mean, probably throw it sooner would be my only qualm here because it looks like he hasn't beat for a second and you almost let him have time. But uh, this is a throw that I think you have time to plant here and throw the ball versus clutching it and then throwing it again. That clutching it, it's an interesting habit for sure. Drop back here. Run around, eyes downfield, excellent throw here. And a nice catch. Wow. Uh, th this big, this kind of big wind up throw here. Gets it there before the linebacker, risky throw. Once again, kind of a one read thing here it looks like. Looks like he has a little bit more time. It looks like this guy might be a little bit more open here. I'm not sure what the one, two, three progressions are, but uh, he do be kind of eyeballing a certain receiver from time to time. Granted, you know they have some pretty dang good receivers over here at Kennedy, but all right, this is a clean pocket here. He has all day, all day to throw. Oh, you have got to catch that. I say they've got some pretty good receivers right as this happens. What is that? But this is a great play here. Um, I think that the drop back, uh, his drop back in general looks a little weird. Like, look at that huge kind of lunge first step and then that, like, clap. But this, like, throw technique and follow through on this, that's very clean. There's a lot to be happy with that. A lot to be happy with about that, I should say. Okay, we got a little jet motion here. Drop back. Got time, got time. Kind of staring. It, like, he looks over here for a second, right? 
and doesn't see anything that he likes, then he's already back over here. But it's like, you can tell that this linebacker here is about to have to make a choice, okay? So, and this linebacker is looking inside at you. He's not going anywhere, he's not going anywhere. So either this route or this route are going to be open. Like this, right here. This, this one right up the seam. I love probably this throw here. Because this guy, I mean, I feel like he's already beat because he's now following this. I think that was the running back. Or no, no, that was the slot here that just runs this kind of, that's a really lazy flat route. But, I mean, look how open this is. Instead of staring, staring, staring this down. I think that this throw could have happened a lot sooner over on this side. Granted, this is a great throw here, right by the sideline. Excellent timing, excellent timing. But I think that a decision on the right side of the field was there a little bit sooner. All right, more motion. Does he clutch this? Not really. But way to take what the defense gives you like it and that is the end of the highlight reel so i'm going to start that over while i work on my grades here and kind of talk about it there's just there's some interesting inconsistencies here throughout isaac's film but uh that's what half the fun is so scrambling ability oh my lord yeah it's that good um, let's see, he's throwing the run, also pretty spectacular. Pocket awareness. Sometimes he senses pressure a little bit late, I want to say, but it's um, still pretty dang good. And I mean, just what an athlete. Look at that. Look at that run. His ability to juke and cut and everything like that. What an excellent scrambler. Pocket movement. He does step up in the pocket pretty well, and he also moves the pocket left to right. He does take some pretty massive drop, massive dropbacks that make a lot of his throws quite a bit harder. Um, slash, give. It's you know when you end up running around like this, kind of doing this back and forth kind of thing. It also kind of opens the door for more holding penalties to happen. I think so. You know that's a that's a slight concern. Anyways, back up to his accuracy is sweet. His accuracy is, he's like that. Like I said, a couple of different times where I'm like, eh, you could have done this, but ultimately I'm not too pressed about it. Okay, timing on throws. I mean, he had that excellent comeback. Let's see how this throw does. Do a little bit. Scrambling, scrambling. Oh, this is the one where he ends up having to throw it, like, where that guy's kind of coming back here. So, you know, interesting for sure. Mechanics. This is where the footwork and where that kind of rah, kind of thing uh, comes to bite him back just a little bit here. <laughs> Let's see. 33 to 8. So that's a little over 4 to 2. That's basically the same as uh, Tommy Paholsky as far as touchdown center uh, interceptions. But he did also run it on the ground and it looks like ran a handful of RPOs too. So that is something to consider with his decision making skills as well. Yeah, I think it's going to sit there, to be fair. This one, this is a hard one to grade here because he makes some pretty far throws, but it's a little inconsistent. I think that I can live with that. Yeah, that's good. His timing on throws, is, it's nice. It, It's very good. Like, look at this. Boom. Oh, my God. Come on, dude. And this, I still think it's solid. Uh, let's actually do that. Okay, then let's kind of watch through the film here a little bit. See if this kind of pushes any of my scores up or down. We will see here. 
So, looks like I'm unwavering here so far. That's nice. I might bump one category up by 0.1 point. And then this is kind of what I do is I just kind of nickel and dime it up and down. Oh, that is going to push his stuff up quite a bit um, by 0.2 points. And I just kind of nickel and dime up or down. Um, I'll take away, I'll give back, you know, like pocket awareness on that. Probably could have looked at that pre-play a little bit more, but a pretty sweet throw. Um, and his ability to throw on the run, I mean, it's just magnificent. Um, eh, but we'll, we'll take it down just a notch here. Decision making, okay. Ah, these mechanics. There's a lot to like, and then there's some to be a little disgruntled about here. That's that's for sure here with Isaac's film. Nice ball placement. You know what? I am going to bump up his accuracy. So probably that. And I mean, probably up a little bit more. <laughs> Let me just make sure that I think it's scaled accurately here with some of our other other guys here. Let's see. You know, I, I do think that this needs to go up. At least to that. Yep, that's good. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay. You're going to chill out on that just a little bit. Oh. Let's restart that video for you guys so that you guys still have something to watch until I pull up these grades here. Uh, I think his timing is pretty dang good, but is it that dang good? Uh, overall mechanics, that is what needs the most work, I would say. And well, we could bump up decision making a little bit. Yeah, that was a little harsh there. Scramble ability, magnificent. It looks like one of the highest graded scramble abilities I've ever given. Uh, this throw on the run needs a little... Nah, that's good. That's good. I think that's a pro pro. And then pocket awareness. Okay, cool beans. So let's go ahead and take a look at my final grade here for Isaac. Kind of move along using the same spreadsheet and whatnot. And let's insert one. Insert one. Insert one. Okay, cool beans. So now we are looking at Isaac Cisneros's um, stats here, or you know his his numbers here. I think that his arm power is incredible. Obviously, having given it a nine here, I think that he can make a lot of throws. He's able to push the ball down the field, and defenses should be afraid. He's able to utilize the speedster that is Ron Gallegos the third. I want to say. And, um, you know, I think he's able to do so much for this kind of the offense and gives the offensive coordinator so much free freedom with his athleticism and just with his really powerful arm. He has a very strong arm. I mean, even though that technique isn't great, I mean, that's a very hard throw to make on the run and one that he makes pretty regularly. He makes it pretty regularly moving uh, right or left, and that's something that you do got to like here. Now, arm accuracy, I give it an 8.8. .8. I do think that it is at least three-star accuracy. That is a great example of that incredible accuracy. And he makes a lot of wow throws that do get me pretty hyped. Um, I just want to see probably some more accurate kind of over-the-middle throws is the only reason that this isn't quite a 9 yet. I did have it at a 9, then I brought it down, and then I put it up, and then I brought it down. So that's, you know, just, just need more stuff kind of over-the-middle that can accentuate the timing a little bit too. That's, I mean, like, that's a great timing throw, right? That's one that the receiver has to catch. And I think that that's one that, you know, you could see like, oh my gosh, this is potential four-star rating here. And I think that it could climb even more. Uh, just needs to make more of those throws over the middle here. And so that brings, I think that the throws over the middle kind of belong in this category here, decision-making skills. And I'm even going to actually kind of bump I'm going to swap these scores here because he does he does a lot of things right, I will say. So we'll even go like 
eight here for overall mechanics. But his decision-making skills. He stares down one receiver way too much. Way too much. I think that he needs to he needs to go through his reads a little bit more. I mean, he probably knows that, you know, certain receivers are gonna win those matchups. But I I just and he you know, his first read is open a lot, but he he tends to to stare receivers down a pretty significant amount, I wanna say. And I just I don't know. And it, sometimes I feel like he pushes the ball downfield when I think that there is a read that's sooner that he can make and throw. Like, there's this one play where he throws it, you know, on the right, he's rolling out right, throws it over the middle deep, and he has this guy there, right? But I think that one of his earlier reads is this deep out that is open. And so, obviously, you know, it, it's good to, to score touchdowns and whatnot, but it's stuff like that where it's like, you know, against a team that's a little bit more disciplined at the safety position, you're not going to get that throw. Is he able to recognize that and stick with this deep out route the way that he's rolling out is kind of how I, I view that a little bit. Moving on, um, overall mechanics. I think that he has a pretty solid throwing motion. I think that he does a great job of stopping, you know, whenever he can, of planting his feet and delivering throws a lot of the time. However, you know, it's stuff like this way overheaval and, you know, kind of the way that he, like, twists his entire body when he throws. That one where he ends up hugging himself, that's not always good. His footwork, as far as, like, just normal dropbacks, I think, needs a pretty significant amount of work. And, you know, just working on the base quite a bit is something that he can really focus on. So, I'd say just work on a lot of footwork this summer. And just continue to get stronger and get bigger. And maybe it'll be a bit easier to push some of these balls downfield. Granted, arm power, zip. I mean, ugh, that receiver's going to catch it. But that's a great example of why his arm power is still at a 9. Despite, you know, some of his form and mechanics kind of sliding a little bit. Depending on how and where he's throwing the ball. Do I really need to explain that? Do I really need to explain this? I say as I up this scramble ability to nine and a half. Look, here in the chat, Russell Wilson Jr., I love that, uh, especially as a, a Bronco fan here. And, ooh, actually, you know what I'm going to do is I am going to play the sophomore season so that you guys can kind of see a comparison of last season to this season and see some things that he's doing a lot differently. Uh, I mean, gosh, even right off the get-go, his mechanics already look a little bit worse but uh, and, and that's his sophomore year but anyways back to you know this scramble ability it's it's super good he is a threat with his legs i mean the year before this one so i mean he ran for six touchdowns i want to say this past year his junior year i should say the year before that he ran for he ran for a touchdown but i mean in only seven games he was tucking and running a lot and even had a 100-yard game when they really just let him loose here. And I, I think that, I mean, look at this. 24, 8, 5, 375. He's somebody who could be a potential 2,000, 1,000-yard, you know, through the ground kind of quarterback because he's just that athletic. And, I mean, you've seen it. He's able to make jukes. He's able to make cuts and make these defenders miss. He lowers his shoulder and picks up a couple extra yards. He's one of the best scrambling threats. And the best part about his scrambling is that he keeps the play alive, you know. And that's really what scrambling is. Obviously, you have running quarterbacks, dual threat quarterbacks. I think that Isaac is capable of that. But more than anything, he's able of keeping the play alive. And you can see a lot of Russell Wilson in this kid's game. And, uh, you know, it'll be even more real when we see Russell Wilson this fall and Isaac playing during the same season. But anyways, throwing their run ability. I mean, there's not really a throw that he can't make on the run. And, you know, 8.6, I'll even admit it might be a little bit low. I might even bump it up just a little bit. But his mechanics being a little bit inconsistent while he's throwing on the run is what prevents this from being a higher score and is what actually is going to have me put this back down to an 8.6. And, you know, it, there's some times where he does throw on the run, but I think that throwing on the run is one of those things where it's a decision, right? You either plant and deliver a strike or you have to continue to move and make a throw on the run. There's times where he doesn't necessarily have to make a throw on the run. And I think that that's a decision that I think falls into the throw on the run ability. Pocket awareness. I mean, the pocket is constantly collapsing. So it's really hard to judge that, I guess. Because, I mean, you're going to sense pressure when pressure's in your face every single play. 
However, I think that he does, in some instances, make a great job of moving without directly looking at whatever the pressure is. And so that's why I give him, you know, like uh, a two to three star rating here on the pocket awareness. I, I think that he's pretty solid at that. Pocket movement, um, you know, he does end up doing this kind of zigzag thing quite a bit, which I think sometimes he can step up. And I think that he needs to look kind of up to his left a little bit more. And, but I mean, that's kind of nitpicky. I still think that it's pretty good. He does show instances of stepping up in the pocket. I just want him to potentially do it a little bit more when the opportunity is available. So 7.5 there. This is the grade that I hate giving because honestly, I don't think it matters. I think that Isaac's a next level quarterback. I think that he's one of the best quarterbacks in the state, regardless of class. And, you know, it's there's a lot of points allowed for this Kennedy team just looking at the stats. And that's tough, obviously, to win football games. And so he's going to get hammered for not winning more football games. That's that's something that people are already going to be like, why doesn't he win more football games? Well, read the whole story kind of thing, right? And, you know, I do enjoy quarterbacks who are winners, you know, people who elevate their entire team, like a Briggs Wheatley, who was able to, you know, lead Fort Morgan to a championship on this exact same 3A level that Tommy and Isaac both played on. But I I will say that, you know, that, that there are more circumstances to that. Kennedy has to share the talent pool a lot more than Fort Morgan does, a lot more than Evergreen does. They have to share with a lot of Denver and I've talked to coaches there. They have to compete with Bear Creek. They have to compete with Mullen for talent in their own backyard, as well as other schools kind of in that, you know, Denver area. And that makes it tough to have consistent talent on every side of the ball. And yet he's still putting up these gaudy numbers of 33 to 8 with six rushing touchdowns and almost 3,000 total yards from scrimmage. So all of that being considered, you know, I think that there's some slack to be cut here for Isaac. And the most unfortunate thing, once again, is is this frame size. I mean, he's stuck at... He, he was... I want to say he was like maybe 5'7 last year, so to see him at 5'9 is a little bit more encouraging. He never has had any injury issues, so I am going to bump this up just a little bit because he's, he's never been injured. But he does need to put on some weight. He does need to get a bit more bulky because otherwise he's going to be stuck kind of probably looking for, for the Juco route. Football... It, is discriminatory, I will say, against smaller quarterbacks. I mean, we saw it with Greg Garza, who is our number five senior quarterback, and he has to take a PWO. You know what I mean? Even though I do believe that he is a next level, you know, FCS at least um, level kind of quarterback. And I think that Isaac could be looking at the same thing here, unfortunately. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I did give him a 77. This would land him... On the fringe of our top five senior quarterbacks this year, just for a little bit of comparison. And it's just through phenomenal athleticism and an incredible arm. There are little things he needs to work on. I am telling you, these are my big kind of red markers here. This is the lowest score, but these are the things that he can work on, that he can control, that he can improve, and what's you know, I, I want to see him improve on. These are easy things. This is watching film. This is going in the backyard, working on footwork drills, working on, you know, kind of... And, and these are the same things that in the backyard, while you're working on this, you can be working on this too. And understand like, all right, this edge rusher is going to be doing this. This edge rusher is going to be doing this. What can I do to read the defense before the snap to understand where the pressure is going to be coming from, what does that mean for my receivers getting open, etc. So it's a lot of question asking that I think Isaac can do this offseason to elevate his game and maybe even elevate this team. You know, I'd love to see this Kennedy team back in the playoffs. They were in the playoffs in that spring season. And, you know, he was young. He did make some mistakes in that playoff game. And I, did, I do think that he did improve from that game. And I, I want to see him back in the playoffs. I think that... Colorado football is going to be better off if he is able to get Kennedy into the playoffs and maybe get in a shootout with one of these other top 3A quarterbacks. And they're, the composition of their team is very different, obviously, from a lot of these other 3A kind of grinded out, very physical teams. But you got to be able to beat those teams and you got to be able to, you know, make all the plays on the offensive side of the ball to keep your team in the game. And I think that that's something that Isaac is capable of doing. And so that's why I am going to give him a 77 here. I easily think he could be a three-star guy. He's a fringe three-star right now. 
And man, I I guarantee you if he was 6'2 and like 100 even 170 pounds, this guy already has stars. That's what I think but where I think he would be at, even six foot and, you know, like 170 pounds, he would already have two stars at least. Um, but I, I'd say that frame obviously plays a big role in recruiting in the college process, um, even though he's a baller. I mean, look, if we just grade this with, like, the average of these, let's say that he even scores a seven here. Look how much that jumps up. You know what I mean? And, but... That's not the reality. He's sitting right here. And, you know, maybe he could bulk up a little bit. Maybe look a true 170, maybe a 180. At 5'9", that'd be very stout. That'd be very solid. And I think that that's something that can turn some heads, is just putting on that weight as long as you're able to keep that athleticism. Maybe he has another growth spurt in him as well. But, uh, you know, wishing all the best to Isaac. Make sure to find him on social media. He's at Isaac underscore Cisneros. And, you know... Kennedy High School, QB1, uh, 5'10", 160 pounds, class of 23. The only thing I would recommend, Isaac, is do what Tommy did and put your huddle in here. And then make sure that you have a good GPA too, fellas, because GPA can hold you back. Put your GPA in here if, if, it's, if it's looking good. If you have over a 3, definitely put it in here. If you don't, do your homework, score high on tests, and get that GPA up. It's going to make your recruiting significantly easier. There is... You know, some three-star talent that I've talked to somewhat recently in Colorado who, you know, he had to go the JUCO route because the grades just weren't there. And that's just the reality of it. You are a student athlete. Not everybody is going to go to the NFL. So you need to be able to perform in the classroom as well and be able to get that degree depending on when your football career is going to end. Even if you do go to the NFL, it is going to end at some point and you want to be educated to be able to handle that and have a job following that. But... um Wow, we're not following Isaac. That's kind of disrespectful. Uh, sorry about that, Isaac. Uh, no disrespect was intended. We just tend to lose track of who we're following on Instagram versus Twitter. But, um... Excuse me for just one second. All right, uh, pardon the dog barking there. Um, my dogs are very vocal. I love them. That's Louie and Lestat causing a ruckus back there. So pardon that interruption. Just had to, uh, you know, kind of entertain them for just a quick second. But all that being said, I kind of think that does it for this stream. You know, a little bit on the shorter side, obviously, with, you know, um, with only one of us talking at a time. But while I'm here, I'm going to kind of eat up some time here, go ahead and follow us at Playmaker Corner on Twitter where, you know, we're posting out episodes. That's that's the GOAT episode that really made people upset. You know, liking and retweeting stuff. So we got ducks here. So we've been to some of that work and whatnot. So follow us on Twitter. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram as well. Playmaker's Corner here where, you know, we're posting our episode covers. I mean, this is the one for the stream that was tonight. And that will let you know of when we are releasing streams and what episodes we have out. We release covers here. We got uh, Women's Flag Football on Fridays, so stay tuned for that on Friday with Coach V. We've been doing request episodes. I got another request episode coming out. If you're paying attention to the Twitch right now, you will be look listening to my episode tomorrow, hopefully, dropping anywhere you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor. So you have all those going for you. And those are places where we can listen to the request episode tomorrow. Or, you know, if you're listening to the Twitch stream on one of those platforms, go ahead and listen to just the next episode in line that is going to be my request episode that I'm usually releasing on Wednesdays. We also have a couple more Best of the Rest episodes that Simon, Mason, and myself will be releasing before returning our full attention to requests and whatnot. 
So that's kind of what our schedule looks like. We also repost our TikToks here, which reminds me to go ahead and find us on TikTok. Okay, I was watching Caroline Simpson because she is a beast on that next level. But we are on Playmaker's Corner. You just look at Playmaker's Corner where we post quick clips of basically all of our episodes. So go ahead and give us a follow there as well. If you want your film broken down, whether that's in a request episode or an episode like this one, go ahead and go to any of our social medias. You can see it here on Instagram. You can see it on our Twitter as well, just here in the bio under the link tree. But go ahead and click on the link tree. And on this link tree, there is a film breakdown request Google form. That is where you want to go if you want your film broken down. It's gotten to be too big for us to keep up through the DMs. So please, please, please fill this out. It's only going to take you a couple of minutes here. Yeah, name a player. What state are they from? City, position. Go ahead and drop your film in here as well. Put the link here. We need a certain amount of film to be able to give you an accurate film breakdown. So that is how you are going to fill out that form, like I said, that can be found on any of our social medias. And then this very link tree will take you to our other social medias where you can, if you're not already, make sure to follow us on Twitch. We're streaming every Tuesday. This is where you can listen here. This is our buddy Anthony at Mile High Prep Report. Anchor, this is where you can find our podcast. Same with Google Podcasts. And then the last thing that I haven't mentioned is that this stream is going to be uploaded to YouTube. You can see some of our past streams here. We also occasionally upload these little shorts as well. So go ahead and just look through our YouTube. Subscribe to it as well. Uh, yes, I am subscribed to our YouTube underneath my, my Google because, I mean, you're supposed to be your biggest fan or something, I guess. But, uh, ooh, this growth has been awesome, guys. So just keep those subs coming in. Keep those follows coming in. Follow us on social media, all of that. Make sure to give the the young man Isaac here a follow as well as the other quarterbacks that we've broken down. And listen to our past quarterback breakdowns. Our best quarterback episode, or top five, I believe was episode, I want to say like 107. Yep, and Simon just released Best of the Rest pretty recently here. You know what, we can even just take a look on our anchor where we upload our podcast. Look, you're seeing all this stuff visually, so just take it away with you that uh, this is the place to look. So Best of the Rest interior defensive lineman, go ahead and give that a listen. Mason has been working very hard on the big guys showing them some love. Best of West quarterbacks, episode 120. So more quarterback content everywhere there, not to mention the past breakdowns that we have done. Now that I'm done plugging all of our social medias and it looks like some people are leaving here, I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining this stream and thank you guys so much for all your support for Playmakers Corner. Myself, obviously, and then obviously thank you from Coach V as well as Mason Austin. But I have been your host, Cody Stoffer, for this stream, and adios.